Good evening. Hi, I'm Paul. This is uh, Dave. I am a certified beer drinker, and Dave here is a certified beer judge. Today we're doing a review on uh, Smithix Red Ale. Dave will get that for you. It is uh, Irish made, and apparently it has been around since, what, the 1710? Yeah. when you did this in Kilkenny? Founded in 1710 in Ireland, Kilkenny. Yes. And now it is brewed in Dublin. This was 4.5% uh, alcohol by volume. We couldn't really find a whole lot on it online as far as the... Um, Bittering units or any of that kind of information, if unless we looked up the clones, um, the recipes for the clone beers, I should say. But um, I, we haven't done a red yet on this channel, and to be honest, the last red I drank was a Killian's Irish Red, and that was many winters ago. I, on the other hand, um, this is one of my go-to beers that I really love. There's a, there's a few things that I have that's really stable in my life. Irish pubs and ordering a Smithix is one of them. I like this beer a lot. The only other beer that I kind of put up there with this level is uh, Scottish Ales. I really like uh, the Scottish Ales. Cool. I'm just looking forward to doing a red again because it's been so long myself. So we'll uh, find out what we got here. And yes, maybe I am compensating today. Maybe I can't even operate a pair of pliers well, we'll anymore. We'll see if you can even open it with that thing. Oh, I'm sure I can. All right. So this is typically a little bit sweeter beer. Obviously, a red is going to be probably have a lot of caramelized sugars in it. And you're going to get that reddish from probably roasted malts or crystal malts. Yeah. And usually your crystal malts are going to carry over some some of the sugars that won't get fermented. It'll leave typically a little bit of sweetness to it. Excuse me while I wipe my nose. This is... Uh... Definitely a different smelling beer than most of the other beers we've done so far. Yeah. More malty, bit on the sweet malty. side. Yeah. Malty, sweet, a little creamy smell to it. It's a nice, nice smell. And even still, we're just getting started, but we're already seeing some lacing happening as the head's going down. Yeah, it's a darker beer. It's got a really nice, moussey head on it. If you look at that, I don't know if you can kind of see it there with the camera, if I can get it to focus. But it has that real, like, creamy-looking kind of head to it. Yeah, it's like... Really a, thick. Like a root beer head, almost. Yeah, like a root beer head. And it this is... This one that might need to warm up a bit, too, to really kind of get some of that malty smell. Yeah, it might be a better warmer. It definitely it's, has a sweet smell to it. It's got the sweet... Um, it's got kind of like a sweet cherry-ish kind of flavor almost to it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to say like a Kool-Aid or something, but it's kind of reminiscent of that. I taste a lot of malt, malt to it. A little bit of um, maybe like a Munich malt, like a roasted Think crystal malt, obviously, um, because of the color, but... Yeah, a little bit of hoppiness to it, but not like overly hop. We were looking at some of the clone recipes and uh, like 22 IBU range. Yeah, so it's very low on the very hop low. flavor. In fact, I think honestly it could benefit from a little bit stronger. I think the style itself should be leaned more towards the malt side. Yeah, but so I think on a the traditional. Little, little more hops. I'm not saying like go overboard. I'm just saying a little bit mm -hmm. stronger that way I think would really benefit this beer. Well, when you look at like the um, American Red Ale, the American Red Ales will have that hoppier flavor that you're looking for because they're using that citrusy type hop. This is using probably a noble hop. Um, so we looked at some examples like Saws, Cluster, being some, which is going to have a little bit less subdued on the citrusy flavors. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a good really beer. Like it. It's it's definitely a good beer. I won't say it's not a good beer, and I would definitely drink this over a lot of other beers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a little, I don't know, I want to say too sweet for me. Is it? Yeah. It's it's see, for me, this is the, the right amount of sweetness. This is what I would consider, like, for me, a good benchmark beer. Mainly because I can, it has that sweetness in it. It has that malty character to it, so I'm picking up some of those malts. I can actually taste the hops out of it. But it's not so bitter that it's just destroying my palate. No, the, the hops are there, but they're mm-hmm. they're very subdued. It's almost like you could get the same kind of bite out of carbonation that you're getting mm-hmm. out of the hops on this. And That's really good. They both actually have some of the same kind of um, bitterness to it. The carbonation along with the hops. You and don't have one that's over the other. And I'm not a big carbonation guy, so that might be part of why I'm not necessarily mm-hmm. agreeing with this so much. But once again, I would definitely drink this over a lot of other beers. It does have a very pleasant flavor. It is a light and crisp beer, so you could kill you know, three or four of these sitting around and not find yourself too drunk. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, I've, that's I've done that thing. in many a bar. One thing I'll say, if you're just drinking this and you stop after three or four beers, you, you're you going to be able to function. You know, whether or not you're going to be able to drive, that's a whole different story. I'm not going to go there, but you're not going to be staggering out the door. You're still going to be able to shoot your game of billiards or throw your game of darts. This is, uh, this is definitely falls into what I would consider a session beer. The important sports in life. Yes. <laughs> the um, <bar> sports. <laughs> So I, one of the things that I found interesting, too, is that, now this one's 4.5% alcohol. Uh, though when I was doing some research on it, I was seeing some 5% alcohol by volume and some 3.8%. So I don't know if they brew it differently or if they've changed the recipe over the years, um, or maybe they're just different beers that they're offering. Maybe it's just, just different it's markets. versus Yeah, different markets. It could just be different markets, because you go to different markets, you're going to find different products. And yeah. any anybody like this company is uh, owned by a huge conglomerate that also owns Guinness and like Crown Royal and yeah. some of the others. Do you remember? It was giant. Anyway, yeah. The uh, if you got a conglomerate that's that big, they're going to be savvy enough in their business decisions in order to tailor. Like if they think the Southwest U.S. is going to want a heavier alcohol, they're going to probably put a heavier alcohol product out there in that market if they want to think somebody's going to prefer something that's going to be lighter they're going to put like a less strong version of it in that market you know yeah so this is one of those old kind of old time kind of beers originally the company was founded 1710 uh now it's brewed in dublin but originally brewed in kilkenny for me this is a very malt forward beer Yes, it is. One of my favorite. I tend to lean towards the malt-flavored beers or malt-forward beers. Uh, I like the subdued hoppiness to it. So for me, I, this falls right into that, that world that I really like to perfect these kind of beers. I don't know, but the I haven't... It would take me drinking a couple more of these to really make up my mind on this one, but it's got like that... Uh, I want to say like artificial fruitiness, like an artificial cherry that you'll find in Kool-Aid or like an artificial strawberry kind mm-hmm. of flavor in the background. And I'm not sure if I like it or not yet. And like I said, it'll take me having a couple more beers before I really make up my mind on that because right now I could go either way. And that could be the hops. Or I mean, and not just the hops, but it could be, obviously it's probably everything combined together. Mm. So the malt will kind of put off a little bit of that. Uh, the yeast will put off a little bit of that. So it's obviously an ale, so it's going to have a lot more estuary character to it. So you're going to have a lot more of those kind of fruity flavors that are coming from the yeast. Yeah. So that might be what you're picking up. That's possible. Well, let's go ahead and get to rating this stuff here, Dave. I'll go ahead and let you um, do the... I, I'm going to be on high on the presentation, uh, mainly because... It's a good looking beer. It's a good looking beer. It's and the a good color. I mean, it's the color that I love to see. It the had heads. that decent head. And I, I've seen people say that it doesn't normally. And it has kind of subdued a little bit. 
but it kept it on there pretty good. So I'm going to be fairly high on it. It had a good smell to it. I, I really did wish it would hit a little bit harder on some of that malty flavor. If I was going to make it myself, I probably would maybe up the Munich a little bit, maybe up the roasted a little bit, create a little bit more of a malty character to the smell. But I smelt the malt right Yeah, away. no, it's so a good I smell. I felt really good. good. I'm going to go up there about nine on the presentation. I'm not going to be quite that generous. It's it's a nice clear bear. The head is obviously fantastic. The lacing is not like out of this world, but it's definitely not to be ignored. I'm I'm gonna give this on a presentation. I'm gonna go with a uh, eight okay. myself. Eight. Yeah, because this is initially a very very attractive beer. Yeah, I think if you put a bunch of American hops in this, you probably would be quite a bit higher on the uh, presentation and the taste because I think that's kind of what you're you're missing out of it otherwise you know this is a really good base yeah now from a taste standpoint I'm probably going to back off a little bit on the numbers I'm going to say an eight on this I like the taste uh, I like it a lot though I think that it could benefit from just a little bit more maltiness to it in what I really a stronger for. flavor. Yeah, I think stronger is what you flavor. Want. You want more of a hit. Yeah. And it's kind of disappointing when you get a beer that's got a really good flavor, but it's not quite there. Yeah. Now, that being said, though, I can say this is one of my go-to beers in almost any Irish pub. I'm going to order a Smithix. I'm not even probably going to look at the beer menu and just order one right off the bat. And then plan on getting, you know, experimental later. Yeah, I can understand. Um, as far as me with the taste, I'm going to give this about a five and a half. There are a lot of beers. I would rather drink this than I just personally wouldn't really go out of my way for this one. I wouldn't pick a bar based on whether or not they had this product. That's what I'm trying to say. But if they have this product, I'll drink it. Yeah, and I can I see that. And I won't complain. I mean, it's it's fairly gene uh, generic in regards to the flavor profile. It's not coming out and creating a huge impression anywhere down the line. You know, and it's, so it's not a huge yeasty beer. It's not an over the top malty beer. It's not an overly hoppy beer. It's it's, it's also it like I'm this far into it, and I can honestly say, you swallow it, give it a second. It's not in your mouth anymore. And I've had beers that. You swallow it, and it was really good, and uh, two seconds later, it's still in your mouth, and you're like, I'm ready for it to stop now. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy the fact that this is a clean beer that yeah. way. Well, one of the things beer. that, you know, when I first got into beer, you know, obviously, you're sitting around, you drink a lot of, like, Coors Light or Budweiser or Bud Light, one of those kind of Ugh. beers. So when you get used to that, like, oh, hey, I can have, you know, a six-pack and drink it all night and um, not have the taste wear out on you. Yeah. But then you kind of realize, like, there's better beers out there. And for me, this was a great beer that I can – I could drink this all night long and be fine with it and not get tired of it. And I would choose it tenfold over one of those light lagers. Yeah. Compared well, to no, that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of beers – that I would much rather drink this than those other beers, mm -hmm. you know. But you're also talking to a guy or listening to a guy talk who is completely okay with drinking a PBR. I mean, I know that makes a lot of people cringe, but hey, you know, a PBR is an acceptable beer in a pinch. It's it's light, it's crisp, it's, you know, not too strong flavored. You can Drink as many of them as you want. You don't have to be too careful because they're not too high of an alcohol content. But you don't want to mix PBRs with other things. That's bad. <laughs> but uh, I definitely would say this is this is a good beer on a lot of levels. You know, my overall impression on this beer, I'm going to go with about a six and a half. And once again, I'm not panning the beer when I only give it a six and a half. I'm just, that's where it's at for my overall impression. It's a good product. It's a quality product. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have any complaints too much about it. I just don't really have any real strong compliments. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I think I like about it 
it's really consistent. You can go to, um, when you get to a lot of craft beers, I've been to handfuls of different breweries where you'll go in there and go, oh man, I love that style. So you order that and then you're disappointed. Oh yeah. No, IPAs are a perfect example. I yeah. love IPAs. I've had IPAs that are just... <laughs> Yeah. You know? So while this is a little bit generic, I know that I can order this and I can get this same experience every single time and not be disappointed. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why it's I rate it typically so high. Uh, otherwise, it's not super remarkable as much as I think it's just really well done and it really kind of sits well with my palate. Overall, I'm, overall impression, I'm going to be at about eight and a half. So I'm definitely leaning on that high side. And the personal preference, I'm going to put there at about an eight as well, just because it's typically one of those that it's I home, It's home. It's yeah, home to you. It's, it's home, like, for sure. There are beers that everybody has that's kind of home. Like, you know, you could be that guy who's been craft brewing for ages and ages, but, you know, home might be a course, you know, mm -hmm. you're not going to turn it down. You're not going to go out of your way, but you're completely okay with with it. Um, as far as my personal preference, I, I'm going to be about a six on this one. You know, it's it's just, that's just me. I don't have any other way to describe it. I've already made my case for where I'm at with it. So it's, it's about a six. And once again, like I said, it's not that I have anything bad to say about the beer. I don't have anything great to say about the beer at the same time. And there's a lot of beers I will definitely take this over. There's a lot of beers that I will take over this. So... Yeah, so I would say next time you're at your Irish pub and you sit down for a beer, reach Give it out. A go. Give it a go. This is a good place to have one. And uh, I think that you won't be disappointed. You might be really impressed. Kind of depends on where your palate's coming from. Yeah, and by the way, now that I'm this far down, I am actually liking the uh, fruity cherry kind of flavor. I'm kind It'll of enjoying it. Hmm? It'll grow on you. <laughs> <laughs> well... At any rate, please like, subscribe, share, watch. Heck, just set up a YouTube playlist with our videos and uh, let it play with the monitor turned off or something. And, uh, you know, get us our hours that way. We'll appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to ask, make some comments. We love to hear from you guys. Any we want to hear suggestions on beers that you want us to try. We want to hear what your suggestions are on this beer. What do you think? I mean, it's a very popular beer. It's been around for 300 plus years. Right. So uh, I'm sure that many of you guys have had experiences with it. I'd love to know. Is it in your top 20 beers? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>